Hey there, welcome or welcome back to Oops, I Planted Again. My name is Courtney and today I'm going to be sharing with you my 2023 planned wish list. I don't think I've ever done a wish list video, let alone really had a wish list because I feel like I am almost impulsive. I have been in the past with plants that if I see it, I'll get it right away or I'll just like know that it's going to come. Like I almost delusional, which isn't a bad thing at all. But these are plants that I really desire in my collection and I also feel prepared to take care of them better. Some of these plants I have already had in the past, they've died and I haven't been able to care for them in the way that I know that I'm capable of now, especially because I have more resources, I have more time and more energy to take care of them. So there are gonna be some plants that you're gonna be like, why is that a wish plant? But it's literally because I've had it before <laughs> and I've killed it and now I feel capable of actually growing that plant. And there's also three plants that I'm not gonna talk about in this video because I already ordered them and they're gonna be here in January, I think around January 10th or 11. So I will do an entire video about those plants. But let's get into the first plant on my list. Okay, the first plant on my list is the Alocasia Capria. Now, I have already had this plant before, and I actually made a video last year because it was in my alocasia collection, and I talk about the trouble that I had with that plant in that video, and it did die off. Now, something that I did then that I won't do this time is I just had the corm of the capria. Obviously, I love growing alocasias from the corm, and it's absolutely 100% possible, but I really would feel better and more capable getting a plant that's already mature and then like if it dies off then I know that I have the corms to grow it in. I also will definitely be using my moss like a perlite combination and I don't know if I'll do drainless or I'll just do like um, having a water reservoir and just having it in a orchid container but I'm definitely not going to do soil. Pretty much all of my alocasias, I feel like by the end of next year, I will most likely have them not in soil. I just think they grow a lot better in other types of mediums that help retain that moisture. The next plant on my list is one that I haven't had and it's the Anthurium luxuriens. I think that's how you say it. This plant is so cool looking and if you've been following me for the past couple of months, you'll know that I've really gotten into Anthuriums really in the past year and I just think they're very cool plants. Now, one of the things that I think has helped me be pretty successful with anthuriums is my grow tent that I am positioned in front of because anthuriums need a ton of humidity and I'm excited to get this plant however I get it. However it comes into my life, I know I'm gonna be excited to have that plant. I just think it looks really cool and exotic compared to like my other anthuriums and I feel like, I think I've only killed off one anthurium, maybe one, maybe one anthurium I think I've killed off in all of the ones that I've had. Um, but I feel pretty good about anthuriums and they seemed really scary at first, especially with importing them. And now I feel pretty comfortable with them and I don't think they're really scary to grow at all. So I'm excited to get this plant in 2023. The next plant that I want is the Philodendron varicosum. Now, I have already had this plant twice in the past two years, two or three years, and I've killed it every single time. So the first two times that I had it, it was definitely a humidity issue, I think, on my end. I didn't have my grow tent yet, and I don't even think I had a humidifier. I wasn't really getting into like that type of humidity, so I don't feel like my environment was right for it. And the last time that I had one... It actually died in July. I went out of town and when I came back, and mind you, before I left to go out of town, the plant was fine. It was growing up a stake. It wasn't soil, it was growing fine. And then when I came back, it had spider mites. And I was just like, you know what, F this plant. I'm so sick and tired of this because I had battled spider mites with it before and it was just so much trouble and I just felt so overwhelmed by it and the lack of growth because I don't know it was just a battle constantly with that plant but I have a soft spot for them I don't know why I just really think the look is amazing of them and I also know that they're really terrible to import I've heard that a million times so I don't know if this is one that I'll import or one that I will try to get locally 
I'll just have to see how the plant comes to me, but it's definitely a plant that I feel like I want to, not conquer, but I feel like the word is conquer. Like this is a plant I want to grow successfully. I want to grow it big and luxurious. And I know that I am capable of doing that in 2023. The next two plants are strings of things. So if you've seen any of my TikTok videos about the string of pearls, you'll know that I have never successfully grown one. And out of all of the strings of things, I think it is just the most cute. Like, I just love the look of it. And I've never been successfully able to grow one. And I've probably had it like five or six times in like the past couple of years. And I have taken advice and, you know, some of it's worked, some of it hasn't, but I still don't have one fully grown. So this is one I could probably pick up at like Lowe's or something. Will I do it now? No. I'm probably going to wait till the spring and summer time because I feel like that's my best season for growing and where I can like pay attention to the plant the most. And I'm definitely going to take into consideration the other methods of growing rather than kind of just leaving the whole thing in soil or leaving it in the container that it comes in because I think that was one of my biggest issues. It was just the medium and... I don't know if it was the light because I feel like I have pretty good light in my house. I have a lot of really good areas in my house where my plants are growing successfully, but I would probably put it under a grow light and change the medium for this next time that I get it because I know that I can grow it. I know that I can do it. I just, I, this is one plant that I seriously want to conquer. Seriously. And the other string of things is a string of hearts plant. Now I had a rehab string of hearts plant I've had like a couple little cuttings here and there but I've never had like a really full pretty <laughs> nice one and I just think it looks so cool and I definitely will not be trying to grow it from cuttings I like growing from cuttings I have no problem with it but some plants I just don't have the patience for and I would rather just buy a string of hearts I don't know if I want the variegated one or the regular one but I would rather just buy one that's already full and take it from there. I think that's the mindset that I'm going into with a lot of plants is I'd rather buy mature and then if it dies off, then rescue instead of like trying to start from scratch. And I hope that with doing this, I'll be able to be a lot more successful with these plants. The next one is one that I feel like is not talked about that much. It's a Skindapsis Jade Variegated. And obviously I'll put the picture up on the screen. I saw one of these on TikTok. I can't find the video. I don't even know who had posted it, but I found this one because I just remembered that this was one that I I saw a couple months ago and I thought it was gorgeous. I love Skindapsis. I just think they look so cool. I will say they are thirsty bitches, but you know, that's okay. I think I'll be switching to not using my complete soil method for everything and hopefully that will bring me some more success but I just love the look of this plant I don't really like I'm not like a diehard variegated person I love variegation but it's not like the first thing that I look out for it's not like on the top of my list I think the only variegated plants I have right now I have my monster albo I have my syngonium albo and then I have the epipremnum um, albo. I think that's the only, those are like the only like variegated plants that I have that are like those like fancy variegated plants, but variegation isn't like a super crazy deal to me, but this one just looked so freaking cool. And I feel like it will look amazing in my collection and I will probably buy a starter plant just because it is a little bit on the pricier side, or I will just allow the plant to come to me. However, it wants to come to me. Um, but this is one I'm definitely really excited and I hope people talk about it more because I just think it looks so cool. And the last plant on my list is the fiddle leaf fig tree. Now I, this was one of the first plants that I ever had when I first got into house plants six years ago almost, and I've never been able to successfully grow one. And I've had intermittent success, but not enough that I feel good about. Now, one of the biggest tips that I got, I think this was last year or the year before, was to buy one that's already mature. So when I move, because I'm planning on moving by the end of the year, I will buy a big ass one. I'm going to buy a big ass fiddle leaf fig and put it like in my living room or my bedroom. And that's what I'm gonna do. I think that's probably my best course of action with this plant. And it's just always one that I've loved. It just, it's like my starter house plant that I've just always wanted and I know that it is going to come into my life 
one way or another. I want to thank you so much for watching today's video and let me know in the comments below what your wishlist plans are for 2023. Thank you again for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.